all know that growing your own food is great fun for the whole family and just so satisfying to be able to harvest your own produce. But it now seems more important than ever to grow your own fruit and veggies. The Diggers Club is the country's largest community of gardeners and they've been helping Australians grow tastier food for over 40 years. So I've come to Diggers HQ in Heronswood, Victoria to get some homegrown inspiration. So Marcel, Diggers specialise in heirloom varieties of vegetables, but what makes them so special? Heirlooms are full of old-fashioned flavour. You know, they're the old-fashioned varieties that our grandparents and our great-grandparents grew, and hopefully we'll be able to hand them down from generation to generation so that our grandchildren grow them too. They may not have the storage of commercial varieties, but the yield and the flavour and what you can do with them is just so amazing. And the best way to grow them is from seed? Absolutely, and it's also one of the best ways to save them too. Anything that's grown from seed like that means that you can store years worth of food in a tiny little shoe box. And I think that's a really great thing. I'm loving the markings on these beans. Isn't it beautiful? That one's a speckled cranberry, and it's just one of the seeds that we list through our mail order business. But we have over 500 heirlooms to choose from, and you can see that's what makes them so beautiful and special. Oh, it certainly does. Perfect for armchair gardening at the moment. Absolutely. <laughs> for those people at home that are looking to save their seed, you know, have you got any tips? Yeah, it's really easy, actually. Once you've grown the plant, you find a nice plump pod like this one, and you let it dry on the vine. And then, to pull it off, you just simply open it and there's your dried gorgeous. seeds inside. And aren't they so pretty? Just pop them in an envelope and then sow them next spring. Now, I know what you're thinking. Not all of us have space at home for a really big vegetable patch. I think you might be surprised at just how productive you can be in a small space. So take a look at this. This is a food cube, so it's only a metre by a metre, and you can see just how much food you can cram into a space like this. So when you're dealing with a mini plot, the key is to go for highly productive varieties, like this beautiful one right here. So this is called silver beet five colour. So you can see it's got these gorgeous coloured stems in different colours and it's um, really fast growing. So you can harvest from this plant within about four to six weeks. And take a look at this. This is a beautiful heirloom lettuce mix. So these are great, highly productive. They're a cut and come again vegetable. So you can quite simply nip out into the garden, harvest those outside leaves as you need it and the plant just keeps on growing. Now the other thing you can look for are nice compact plants that are still nice and productive. So this is a beautiful chilli called Joe's Long. Just take a look at the size of that chilli and it gets even bigger than that. And the beautiful thing is you'll have fruit on it from summer all the way through to autumn. Marcel, I'd never thought of growing beans in such a big tub like this. It looks fabulous. Isn't it amazing? It just goes to show that even in a small space you can be highly productive with this bean especially called Purple King. You know, I've actually grown this variety before and watched it change colour in the pot and go green. That's right. That's why they call them magic beans. <laughs> My kids thought that was really special. The more you pick, the more beans you get, which makes it a really great one for small spaces. Well, so one of the things I love about the heirlooms is just how beautiful they are, both in the garden and on the plate. Absolutely. Well, this one's called Eggplant Lestata de Gandia, and it's either an Italian or Spanish heirloom, depending on where you come from. Oh, there's a bit of debate. There is a bit of debate, <laughs> but it's a cook's choice because it's got lots of flesh and hardly any seed at all. And it's just so pretty. It's so beautiful. it's actually quite a compact plant. Would you get a lot out of it? You get around three and a half kilos per plant. Oh, look at this. This is like deliciously ugly. Isn't it amazing? It's an old French heirloom called Galo de Seine. I love it. It's almost like it's got warts on the skin. Is it? That's what I usually call it, the French warty one. For people who are growing their own food, they're looking to feed their families, pumpkins are a really good crop for that, right? Absolutely. Grow them in the spring and the summer, then you harvest them in the autumn and you've got food right through to the following spring. Oh, that's perfect. And when you're storing them, leave the stem on. Absolutely. That's the key. You've got to leave the stem on. Of course, the other thing we can be doing is making the most of vertical space. Absolutely. Anything that grows up a trellis like this is perfect. This is fabulous. What is this? That's a Mexican sour gherkin. So it's quite a little treat, actually. Can I taste it? Yeah, please do. Mmm, so it is a little sour. But then it gets a bit more kind of sweet and cucumbery. Yeah. It's great. Isn't it? It's amazing. You would love this. Yeah. Kind of pop it in your mouth hole. Absolutely. 
And of course, every veggie garden should also have flowers. They're not just decorative, they also attract beneficial insects and much needed pollinators. And some, like nasturtiums, are also edible. Now, for most of us, when we prepare a meal, we might get out the recipe book, flip through the pages, and then head off to the supermarket for ingredients. But you know, the wonderful thing about growing your own is you're able to then wander out into the garden, see what's ripe and ready. So the garden becomes your inspiration. And I think that is such a beautiful thing.